All right, uh, here's part two of the Raimi Man review. So last time I left off, I believed I was talking about how Tobey Maguire's Raimi Man was nothing like Peter Parker or Spider-Man, uh, because Peter Parker, unlike being an altruistic, sweet little boy who just made this one mistake and his whole, which causes him to have a life-changing, uh, life-changing lesson, which it really doesn't. Uh, Peter Parker in the comics was a normal kid uh, who got picked on, but not to the extent they did in the Rain Man films. He was selfish, but not to the point of being unlikable. And when he got his powers, he did get cocky and told wisecracks, which Tony McGuire's Raimi Man uh, lacked severely. And the jokes he did tell were fall flat because of how lame and cliche they were. And uh, Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in the comics tried to make money off his talents naturally. And the reason why he left let the carjacker go in the comics? Not because the manager hustled him. Not because the store clerk wouldn't cut him a break. It was simply because it's not his problem. He only looked out for himself and those who were good to him. If the police couldn't do their job, then fuck the police. And when he learns Uncle Ben died from his Aunt May I mean, from his Aunt May and, and the cop at home and not at the, in the middle of the street. Street, he uh, catches the murderer and he finds out that this, this is the guy who I let go because I thought this guy wasn't my problem. This aspect gave the moral the biblical weight it had. As we go further into the reviews, I'll explain how the character was still done wrong. But I will say this, when Spider-Man tries to save Mary Jane uh, and the kids from the Green Goblin off the bridge, my, note that that's Gwen Stacy's death in the comics, by the way. Green Goblin tells uh, him to choose, and he saves both making the whole bit completely pointless. But what agitates me to no end besides the fact that this is the Gwen De Stacy's death scene and they just butchered it by not having Gwen Stacy there and nobody dying is that Sp Raimi Man went for Mary Jane first. If he had done this wrong, he would have sacrificed the lives of children for his booty call. Our hero, everyone! Plus, Sam Raimi said he based his version uh, of Peter Parker not off the comics version, but more off his brother, Ted Raimi. I can believe that because they look strikingly similar. It's almost terrifying in that aspect. Now let's talk about Mary Jane, or rather Mary Sue as... Uh, in this movie, Mary Sue is not the fun party girl with commitment issues that is Mary Jane, but just a generic next door, I mean girl next door, the object of the hero's a affection. Worse still, she took the place of Gwen Stacy as Peter's love, first love. I'll explain that later, later how that is bad. Uh, the two's relationship practically goes fucking nowhere. They have nothing in common to create chemistry. It's completely cheesy and she's always, always getting kidnapped. Let's proceed, shall we? Harry Osborn, played by James Franco. I don't have much of a problem with Harry in this movie, but like the rest of the characters, he just comes off as one-dimensional. That's the tendency of all the Raimi, uh, Sam Raimi's films, to be blunt. They're pretty cliche, but since he didn't do much with them, I'll just let it slide. And now let's go into Norman Osborn, 
the green, aka the green goblin, in name only. The, and since he's not nothing like Green Goblin, I would refer to him as Green Power Ranger Knockoff. Look, Willem Dafoe is a is a great actor, but when he overacts, my my God, does he overact? I mean, it's so over the top. It was he was practically a Power Rangers villain, hence the name. Now, they basically instead of making Norman Osborn the smart but shady businessman, uh, who was also an arrogant, uh, sadistic sociopath, even before becoming the Green Goblin, uh, and everything the Green Goblin was was just amplified by the serum that was already, uh, existing attributes of Norman Osborn. They make him a schizophrenic. He talks to himself in the mirror. Uh, pretty much the typical uh, multiple personality cliches. Uh, he's acting, he's acting strange. He's rebelling against his board members. He wasn't going insane. It was the Goblin persona taking over the, taking over with the good Norman still inside. Yeah. <sighs> And am I the only one who thought Norman Osborn was scarier than the Green Power Ranger knockoff? The pumpkin throwing alter ego was less intimidating than his normal self. And that costume. <laughs> I can't help but laugh every time I see it. You know what, in fact, let me pull up again. I, I do a, I would edit my video to the, so you guys could see just how stupid it looks, but we all know what it looks like, so there's no point. <laughs> oh. Oh. I have also come to the realization, and an embarrassing one at that, um, that Green Power Ranger knockoff didn't need to fight Spider-Man after his first fight. He had already killed the board members threatening to terminate his company, and nobody uh, knew who Green Power Ranger knockoff was. Uh, he was he could have gone uh, gone the rest of his life scot free, but instead he has the uh, goblin persona tell him we should take over New York slash the world, which he had no latent desires for, as opposed to his comic counterpart, so it comes off as contrived reason to move the plot along. And to top it all off, he was... He has the brilliant idea to capture Sp uh, capture Raimi Man so he can tell him to join him, as well as say that he might as well do it since the city will eventually turn against him. This is not only stupid, since he... Uh, since at first he not knocks uh, Raimi Man out with some uh, knockout gas. Thus he could have ended any and all threats to his plans, assuming we exclude any pre-existing crime bosses, or the military, or even some upcoming supervillains. But he choosing this ultimatum instead is also points another flaw. In, in this plan, nobody in the city was against him outside of J. Jonah Jameson. Then that guy does not count, because he is obligated by character to hate Spider-Man. And it's further proven as the trilogy continues that nobody continues to be against him. This isn't the Green Goblin from the comics, who, who, was just, as, who just as Norman Osborn alone is an arrogant, power-hungry, intelligent sociopath, but a one-dimen but this is a one-dimensional, mustache-twirling villain you'd see in a Dudley Do Right uh, episode. Now let's talk about J. Jonah Jameson, aka the saving grace of these movies. J.K. Simmons nailed J. Jonah Jameson. I have nothing negative to say about his performance. 
He was sa he was the saving grace of this trilogy. I hear he wants to be in the Amazing Spider-Man franchise, and I would love if he reprised J. Jonah Jameson in there, and see how he would do with that. However, I will complain that about his motives for hating Spider-Man. In the comics, it's because he hated the mass vigilante, uh, because he was a vigilante and shouldn't be trusted, along with uh, his wife being killed by a masked gangster uh, when he refused to drop a story, does uh, create a bit of a generalization, more or less. Here in the movies, it's just because he's hiding his identity, so he must have some secret to hide. Really? So, why do people like this movie? Well, I suppose everyone likes it because it was the first Spider-Man movie, if I use the term loosely, uh, that, and I suppose it does have a bit of a nostalgic feel to it. Overall, like I said, this movie wasn't great, but still workable. To an extent, I can still recommend it for, for at least one look. In short, this movie was kind of meh. Now let's oh jeez. Now let's move on to what might be considered my most hated Spider-Man movie of all time, Raimi Man Two. Oh God, this is gonna be painful. <laughs> 